Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Welcome to episode number 213 of Category 5 Technology TV. It's Tuesday, October the 18th, 2011. I'm Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Rachel Shu. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm good. How about you? I'm fantastic. And I thought that she sneezed on me, but no, that is her last name. How is it? Is, is, I know. That's a bad we, one. Oh, <laughs> we started with puns tonight, and it's all downhill from here. <laughs> Okay, well, you've got some stuff coming up that you wanted oh, to... Oh, uh... okay, so I'll let me tell you what's coming up in the newsroom. Researchers have demonstrated a device which lets electronic equipment receive power from a living body, powered by glucose and oxygen. That should be interesting. Neat. And we have HTC lost another legal battle against Apple. And the reinvention of the train may prove to also reinvent personal travel as we know it. And mm. research in motion operates apps as a... For last week's three-day service outage, is it still good enough? Uh, stick around; these stories are coming up in under 30 minutes. Awesome! Just experiencing some issues there on the feed. I'm just giving everybody a, a second just to buffer. And is everybody good? Fantastic! All right, uh, gang, we've got so much fun stuff happening tonight. It's nice to have Rachel here for the first time. We had a little couple of hiccups there off the bat, uh, but it looks like everything's good now. I want to, you know, get it fixed right off the bat. But hey, these things do happen. Um, yeah. Welcome, everybody, in the chat room. Nice to see you. And uh, if you're not in the chat room, www.category5.tv is the place to uh, head on over to. Or if you're on Freenode, you can also go to Category 5 as the room. Hey, Jot, Dave Maydu, Agamotto, JVSCC, and Greg in Texas. Smitty Smith joining us uh, in the chat room. So it's Shu. Shu, yeah, I guess. Or zoo, whatever is easier to pronounce. Well, which one do we <laughs> go with? Goes by either, but so it's shoe because it's going to be a zoo tonight. Should we go with that? Oh, see, there's Bad a pun. Rock. There's a pun for both pronunciations. It just keeps getting worse. It's terrible. I'm terrible. I'm so sorry. Speaking of horrible things to do, though, <laughs> head on over to our website, category5.tv. Um, and at, you'll see that we have the About Us and the Category 5 TV team. Rachel's bio is there. And uh, there, there's some interesting facts about you. And, and I guess uh, viewers can post their questions in the, uh, in the chat room, Category5.tv, and uh, get their questions in with regards to Rachel and, and what it is that she does. But something that, uh, that has stood out to a lot of people was this whole thing about um, how you dressed up as a cow and ended up in the newspaper um well i'm sorry for all of you who just heard this story a couple weeks ago <laughs> well, see, it's, but <laughs> it's a new season so no i was singing in a school play and of all the people they got a uh, photo of me and put in the paper of me singing dressed up as a cow i know i know you think that it's redundant but in fact we were able to get a hold of this photograph so i was very pleased to be able to put this on the air tonight <laughs> Oh wow! You <laughs> you managed to dig that up, did you? <laughs> it was it was tough to track that down, people. <laughs> Ooh, you that. must have really dug through the archives for that one. <laughs> oh dear me! <sighs> now you know where I was going with that. <laughs> we have started to receive some postcards in the mailbox, which is awesome. Go to our our website. <laughs> Category5.tv, and uh, at the bottom of the website, you will see that our address is there for our postal box, and uh, we would love to receive your postcard. Uh, tonight, we have one here from Lati. Ooh, isn't it Lahiti? Lahiti? L-A-H-T-I. No, I People can Lati. Is it Lati? People can uh, correct me in the chat room. This one uh, comes to us from, it looks like Matty. M-A-T-T-I, I believe. Please correct me if I'm wrong, because I want to get you some viewer points. Uh, the postcard comes to us from 
Finland and says, Hi, Robbie and crew. Thanks for putting out a great show every week. Category 5 is a fun and easy way for a non-geek to learn Linux. Best regards. And again, I believe it's from Matty, M-A-T-T-I. Uh, if that's from you and, and I've got that wrong, just let me know because uh, I'll throw some viewer points your way for sure. What? Linux. Linux, yeah. Just for that, I'm going to teach you all about it. <laughs> Another uh, postcard came in from, it looks like, Shones in Shemnitz. I, I have trouble, you know, pronouncing this stuff, of course. Oh, let's see. Sorry. There it is. Very cool. We love to receive your postcards and learn where you are from and watching from. This one says, hey, Robbie, hey, Cat5 gang. You want a snail mail? So here it comes with all the best wishes for the next, uh, for the next years from Andreas Alexand Alexandrov. There it is. And uh, thank you very much for the postcard, uh, Andreas, as well as Maddie. Cool stuff. So we're going to put these uh, together in the studio, and we'll have like a, a little... Uh, wall with two postcards to start, but we <laughs> we would love to uh, receive your postcards, and we're gonna send a hundred viewer points your way. Uh, and uh, so there we there we have it. Cool, nice to receive some postcards. And it seems that everybody well so far. I mean, there's two, but kind of. This in, is seriously all you've got. So you this kept is talking well. This about is it so far. So I thought. I mean, it takes th like this that. one was sent on July 10th, so it takes some time to get here. You know, so you know what can you do. That's the postal system for you. It's not email, Rachel. It's You'll have to email. start sending yourself some more postcards to fill the wall up. <laughs> Barry. Oh, another one from Barry. <laughs> Look at that. I will call around to different countries and actually order <laughs> postcards. In from too. Just print a bunch of photos off of Google and, and make them look like postcards. And <laughs> there you go. Tonight, uh, actually, we are going to have an epic battle between free open source software <laughs> and them. We're going to have a, a, a wild battle beyond measure between Photoshop and the GIMP as Rachel shows us how to do texturing on Photoshop and I combat her. It's no battle. By doing the same in the GIMP, which is free software, just so you know. Very cool. Yeah, Rachel's going to show us, Jot, how to do tons of awesome stuff. Also, uh, we've got tons of viewer questions. The mobile site is up and is working live for uh, viewers who are using iPhones, uh, iPod touches. Uh, it seems to be working for some users with the iPad, uh, both, both first and second gen, but definitely the uh, iPod touches and the uh, iPhones are, are working well, and we're working on developing that into something that is going to work with, uh, with more platforms as well. Of course, we want to get it working on Android and, and uh, other tablet devices that are out there. Uh, BlackBerry would be good as well. So if you have a QR reader, scan that code there. It's going to launch the uh, Category 5 mobile site. And, uh, yeah. All right. So nice to have you here. I guess we've got uh, viewer questions to jump into and everything. We'll hit that in, uh, in just a second. I think I've got some tweets, as a matter of fact, that have come in. I, I decided to include a, a, in our tweets of the week this week. If you're on Twitter, it's at Robbie Ferguson to follow me. Uh, or, of course, at Category 5 TV uh, to follow the show. And I, this one went out to, it's from me, but it, it went out to Barry residents using the Barry hashtag. And a little tongue in cheek, but basically saying, hey, Twitter users in Barry, wise up, quit clicking on phishing scams. I've got so many of these from you. And if you follow that link, t.co slash capital Y, uh, what I'll do, I'll copy that and post it into the show notes for this episode, number 213. Basically, it's really been rampant on Twitter the past couple of weeks, and, and I'm seeing it huge in Barry, and that's why I use the Barry hashtag, um, that this tweet is coming that's direct message that says, oh, there's this nasty blog entry about you. Click here for information. What happens then is that it brings up what looks exactly like the Twitter login page. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. And in fact, the URL is like twitiller.com, so it even looks at first glance to look a lot like Twitter. And it has the username and password at the top, so people then log in. What they don't realize is this is actually a robot kind of site that grabs your username and password, logs into you, and then mass mails all of your users that, uh, that, that you follow and that are following you. And the scary thing is, is that it could hijack your account as well. Um, so you want to stay away from that kind of stuff, and that's why I'm saying, hey, wise up, quit clicking on phishing scams. 
picture of my son also went out on Twitter this week working on the green screen just to say, hey, what could we be up to? Uh, we had a fun time uh, earlier this week getting him in the uh, green screen studio. Lauren Elizabeth, a.k.a. Lauren is a lefty underscore, says, girls fall in love with what they hear, boys fall in love with what they see. That's why girls wear makeup and boys lie. Little fact from Lauren. This was really cool. Creative Commons. Uh, this is at Creative Commons on Twitter. They have uh, over 433,000 followers. And they tweeted, Creative Commons licensing means viewers don't need to worry about their rights. Why Category 5 TV chose Creative Commons? Attribution. And they posted a link that actually leads directly to our site. And for one day made it very hard to keep up with internet traffic. <laughs> very cool that uh, that they tweeted that on our behalf. And Hillary Rumble, at Hillary Rumble, uh, is uh, working on a fundraiser right now. Again, I'm going to post these links for you, but there it is. Uh, Hillary supporting the uh, Aviva Community Fund. They're raising some funds for the, uh, the deaf camp that she works at. So I'd encourage people to check out that link. And again, there will be a link to that in the show notes for episode number 213. If you'd like to get our attention on Twitter, uh, just say at Robbie Ferguson, and that will uh, that will go straight to me. Or you can go at Category 5 TV, and that will go to, to the group of us, the show. Cool. So um, we have some viewer questions here, and this awesome. one is from Voodoo Sandman or Leland. Hey, um, Leland. His question is, this question is for the whole Category 5 team. Um, do you know why mailmen go postal? Because they have to deal with the phone company, too. Oh, sorry. I ruined your joke. <laughs> <laughs> I totally ruined your joke. Okay. Why do mailmen go postal? Because I don't know, Rachel. Why? <laughs> because they have to deal with the phone company, too. Sorry there, buddy. <laughs> Great show. You're on at 4 p.m. here in California. <laughs> I work for a Bell Telephone. Oh. We all watch your program instead of working. Due to our delay, I get lots of overtime. Just kidding. Nobody works in California. They garden. So, Leland, dude, I had no idea that you worked for Bell. That is awesome. Uh, most likely in response to my blog entry with regards to the service that we receive from Bell, um, which I don't want to get into, but let's just say that we were with them for two weeks. <laughs> And I'm sorry, and I realize now that you are supposed to be working, my friend, and uh, everyone else in your office that is supposed to be working, supposed to be taking those support calls. <laughs> now I understand. Yeah, no wonder you can never get the help you need from Bell. <laughs> it was probably routing to your office when I was like, why are we getting buffering issues when we're trying to broadcast Category 5? <laughs> and I couldn't get through to anybody because they were too busy watching and going, why are they getting buffering issues? It was all your fault. <laughs> Now it all makes sense. Thanks, Leland. <laughs> hey, we've got to take a quick commercial break. We will be right back after this. Visit our website, Category5.tv. Whether hitting the road or the dusty trails, Liquid Image Canada captures the action with a true point-of-view HD video camera built directly into a high-quality MX goggle. It records every bit of the excitement exactly how you see it. If high octane isn't your thing, take a relaxing underwater adventure and capture it forever in high definition video with a high quality underwater camera mask from Liquid Image Canada. Perfect for the enthusiast snorkeler or the deep sea diver. Check out the entire line of camera masks for every sport. LiquidImageCanada.com this is Category 5 Technology TV. You'll find us online, www.category5.tv. Nice to have you here. All What's right, up? so I heard that nerds like to unbox things. Nerds? So <laughs> it's true. This I brought true. a little something to unbox oh, for Rob. Some and kind of technology? Oh. Oh. And then a 360. Oh, yes, 360. Shh. Well, we don't have one of those spinny things to put it on, mm -hmm. and we don't, uh, we don't even have like a close-up. How could we... Like An unboxing video of donuts. Tim Hortons is going to have to pay him a million bucks now. I'm thinking I, now that I that you've showing, shown their logo on the show, on the show that so much it's free coffee now. for a year. Yeah. So do you want to do the, the unboxing honors of the unboxing? Ah! Do they seriously put a spider in it, or is this just like the way that it, it goes? Is that like <laughs> that's the, just Canadian donut stores? You sometimes get a spider. That's but, uh. okay. I understand. <laughs> Holy cow! You got like a thousand donuts here. As you can see, spider and all. 
Rob's Thanks, not going to go hungry during the show. That was the best unboxing video <laughs> I have ever been a part of. I will let you jump over to viewer questions. I'm sure we've got okay, more. Okay, yep. We have we've one got enough here. here for everybody, actually, if you'd <laughs> yeah, like one. Yeah, come on over. <laughs> mm. This is from Amchai Rotman. Um, hi, Robbie. I was the one that asked the question right at the end of the show. We stayed up at stayed up till 2, and as I recall, you said, oh. sorry, we have no time. Oh, well. So, because um, he's from Israel. So, I followed mm. this guide to try Gnome 3, but I don't like it, and I want to go to get back to Unity. Everything I tried got me nowhere. So, he has this link here. This to, is the link that he yeah, he has a to link. create, to, to install it anyway. I know, like, the problem with, with doing Unity on or doing GNOME 3 on 11.04 is that it's Ubuntu 2 base. Uh, what am I saying? GNOME 2, pardon me. I'm still like getting the donut out of my teeth, so it's, it's distracting. I'm like, I hope they don't notice that I'm going like this. You better get these away from me. Um, well, the problem is, is that it's GNOME 2, right? So if, as soon as you put GNOME 3 on, it, uh, it kind of it stops working, right? So how would you revert back? You'd have to go back to GNOME 2 before you can get Unity working as far as I could, you know, as far as I could guess. Never really a good, a good situation to install GNOME 3 on Ubuntu 11.04 if you think that you're going to be hoping to revert. And in fact, you can have m major problems trying to get GNOME 3 working on 11.04 anyways, um, just because it's dependency on, on GNOME 2. So uh, I, I think if you've got a good backup, Honestly, the amount of work that it's going to be to try to get everything back up and running with GNOME 2 and Unity, you're probably best, you know, all the dependencies, all the stuff that you've already um, upgraded to GNOME 3 versions, it's going to be really hard to regress back. Uh, I would I would honestly just go with, <laughs> with a fresh install. Um, probably be the best way to go. And, you know, it's a, it's a pain to do that, but that's part of experimenting. And anytime you're experimenting like that with... Uh, following tutorials to, to step things up to, to something that's not supported that can cause problems. So I'm sure you understood that when you were doing it, but easy way out is do a reinstall, I think, at this point. So. Cool. Did that... I didn't read the did whole that, email, oh, so did more. that cover everything? Um, um, he just said, I'm about to just reinstall 11.04, right. but I'd really like well, to avoid it. Well, there you go. It. Yeah, that's... I know you'd like to avoid it, but you can understand that you've upgraded to GNOME 3, and Unity on 11.04 is is uh, dependent on GNOME 2 um, pretty heavily, right? And he says that uh, he tried apt get install apt -get Unity. install Unity. And right. I'm missing the systems menu and the window controls. Keep and Nautilus is all messed up. I, I guess where it gets confusing is that people think, well, it's Unity. It's another desktop environment, kind of like GNOME versus XFCE or GNOME versus KDE, right? It's not. Unity is, in fact, a, a Comp is Fusion plugin for GNOME. On 11.04, it's GNOME 2. On 11.10, it's, uh, it's GNOME 3. So in your case, I think easy way out is not the pleasant one, but it's, you know, you've got a good backup. So uh, the nice thing is, is that Linux is really easy to reinstall. I know you wanted to hear about Linux. So keep those oh Linux yeah. questions coming, friends. I just love <laughs> Linux. <laughs> <laughs> you just have not experienced the joy of Linux. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess I can't say anything. I still use Windows XP. I think you're going to have to upgrade pretty soon. <laughs> or is it Windows Vista now? I don't know. It's not very good either, so... <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! It's like oh. get off the show. You're yeah, no, well, you can, you, you're dissing Linux, and meanwhile you're unhappy with Windows, and it's like that's the place that you want to be but when try, you try Linux. I tried Linux, yes. and Windows XP is just this much better because Linux doesn't run everything I like. Oh, ah, yes. Anyway. We have a question here. <laughs> we'll teach her about virtualization yet, friends. <laughs> Dual booting and everything. All right. So, Webwork sent in a message about Robbie's opinions on Star Trek. Hmm? Um, just out. I have none. Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he doesn't like Star Trek at all. Not at all. All right. So, just out of being curious, type. <laughs> you <laughs> okay. said you like the Enterprise series. I also, other than the original series, am a big fan of the show. 
And okay. what about the theme? A lot of Star Trek fans don't like it. How about you? Me, it is one of my favorite <laughs> songs of all time. One other quick question of the original series. What is your favorite episode? Mine is City on the Edge of Forever. Quest starring... Oh, guest starring Joan Collins. I say Trouble with Tribbles is the best Star Trek of hey, all time. Hey, you know, I'd have to say that, that was fun, but it was more fun when they recreated it on Enterprise second time around that was cool and they were like gremlins or something no on enterprise they actually i don't know how we got on this thank you very much my friend <laughs> webworks you're sneaky um no on enterprise they took it and they green screened and they put themselves however they did it it was so realistic the colorization was awesome basically put the enterprise from the future into that episode i think it was trouble with tribbles anyways i wasn't a, a tos fan sorry about that i was a tng fan and uh, and Enterprise surprised me, just like DS9 did, and even Voyager. Voyager I thought I would like, DS9 and Enterprise I thought I would not like. Uh, but both of those I ended up, after getting into the characters, DS9 more so, Enterprise I found, yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty good. It got cut off too soon, though. It ripped us off, I think, as far as the fans go. But I didn't like the theme because Star Trek traditionally uses what? Orchestral music. And then all of a sudden, this rocker comes in. Becca would agree with me, Jot. Guaranteed. I also feel a kinship to Jean-Luc Picard. Old guy Jim says that <laughs> Deep Space Nine reprised the Tribbles. Was it DS9? You may be right. I get them all mixed up because I watch them all, except for TOS. Anyways. That's that. All right, so uh, we have another <laughs> That'll question spark up conversations here. in the chat room, anyway. About Star Trek. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, Gert Jan Prince. Um, hey. Hi, guys. Well, watching the show of the 11th of October, so Robbie and Eric were the hosts. Kay. And therefore, the guys. The guys. Um, got two questions regarding Joomla. Joomla. Is that how you say it? Joomla? Joomla? You can say um, Joomla. Joomla. It sounds more Klingon. <laughs> Joomla. <laughs> <laughs> got my introduction. It's the Joomla. Content management system. Okay, the Joomla. <laughs> Got my introduction to your great show and searching around YouTube for some introductory videos on the subject. Okay. For the context, once had a good-looking website running on PHP Nuke, but because of wavering interest in public content, I pulled it down years ago, looking to get it back into it, and since PHP Nuke seems to be on its last legs, I was looking for a good replacement and came across Joomla and your video on it. I'm having okay. some troubles regarding the templating stuff. Basically, my time, as always, is limited and therefore browsed around for a good match to my idea, my idea regarding the colors and layout. But there seems to be something like T3, non-T3, and alternate frameworks. Tried a T3 gantry. Um, one and couldn't deinstall oh, okay. it. Gantry uh, framework for the, for the templating system. Okay. Um, well, yeah. we'll just continue reading. I'll, I'll make sense of it in a minute for those of you who don't know what Gantry is. and Like me. Jumlach. <laughs> no clue. Okay. And one, in, it, I couldn't deinstall it because of the master status. Since I was messing around in VirtualBox, this isn't a problem, but on my server, I would like to get it right without messing up too much, and therefore would love an overview of templates and specifically focused on the framework aspect. Hmm. So he has two questions, but that's his first one. Okay. Well, basically, Joomla is a content management system um, which, uh, which powers our website. The content management system allows you to easily and quickly deploy websites, modify them, add content. For us, the reason we went with a content management system is so that, because every week I've got to add a lot of content to the site, right? I don't want to have to be maintaining tons and tons of files, so instead it uses a database. It uses a Weisswig editor, which I, in, in fact, use in text mode, so I'm still coding HTML anyways, but it saves it to a database. So, But templates can be tricky if you are not creating them yourself, if you're using, if you're trying to take uh, a template like uh, Gantry, Gantry is a whole other can of worms, and that takes knowing a little bit about, uh, well, quite a bit about CSS and hexadecimal color values and things like that. Gantry allows you to create colorizations for an existing template uh, that is powered by the Gantry framework, and it allows you to change color schemes. It allows you to customize it to your own liking. Um, and 
in that way, you're able to customize the template so it looks like the way that you want it to look, but it's still a template, right? Um, if you're going to get into, it's hard to say, like if, you, if you're going to be using a template that's a stock template, it's going to look like what they created, right? There's things like Afterburner from Rocket Theme that are, you know, meant to be zippy. You can use the, quite often what you'll do is you'll use um, Bees, B-E-E-Z, uh, from the uh, Joomla installation and customize that, make it your own. Uh, add your own uh, designs and add your own content. It's really, really easy to, to uh, manipulate the Bees template because it's, it's standards. It uses uh, flat CSS files and really, really easy to manipulate. But I think the, the depth of that exceeds what I could show you in a video because that's that then you're getting into you know that's a whole series on understanding how css interacts with the files watch our web dev series at cat5.tv slash web dev but those templates are loaded by joomla to make your site you know basically populates that template with with the content but customizing it is you're going to need to go into your ftp or whatever in the templates folder go in and edit the files uh, would probably be the best way to do it if you know html and css but beyond that, I think looking at uh, the Joomla forums is a good place to start. Um, I'll post links for you in the show notes of episode number 213. But definitely to, to tap into the resource of the Joomla community because of the fact that it is, um, it is an open source product, right? So that, that's part of what makes it so great. If you head over to forum.joomla.org, you'll see, you know, there's, there's whole threads about templating for for Joomla so just you know make sure you post in the right place and hopefully they'll be able to uh, provide you with with higher level support than I could I, I I understand it to work with it but how we could actually show you that kind of stuff on the air is is next to impossible I think so mm -hmm. well he does have a second question all right and, um, he says perhaps it's more interesting to you guys bilingual on Joomla is it possible I'm mm -hmm. Dutch and would like my front end to be both Dutch and English perhaps even French in the future I'm guessing this isn't a problem in itself but how about articles written in multiple languages publishing sure. some technical content in Dutch might see be interesting for Dutch only people but with a rewrite to English it might be of help to more people around the world okay here's the thing that you have to ask yourself when you're going to do a bilingual or multilingual site. They're the first thing that you have to ask, and every cu every customer who says, I want to have French on my website too, this is the question that I ask. Well, there's two questions. First question, do you have somebody who's fluent in that language and can translate for you? And two, do they have the time to take every single article that you post on your website and turn it into that language? Because if I create a, fi uh, a file, I'm saying a file, but a page, Mm -hmm. that's called about us and I create it in English but then the person switches over to Dutch and the content hasn't been translated it's just going to say this content has not been translated which is very useless for your users so if that's you if you're the if you're in a situation where yeah I'd like to provide multilingual support but I don't have time to translate I don't have the staff to translate I don't have the ability to translate every single thing that I post it's everything if you post a blog, you've got to translate it. If you post any content, if you make a change, if you change a phone number, you have to remember to change English, French, Dutch, right? Every single instance. So it, it basically doubles your workload or triples your workload. Mm -hmm. um, so there's two things, two options. The first option is to use Google Translate, which you can do on the fly. There are modules for Joomla, you'll find them in the ext extensions directory, that will allow you to tap into uh, Google Translate. With that, it will utilize the Google Translate engine, the API, to convert your English written text or your Dutch written text to any of the languages that, that uh, Google supports. That said, if you do have the resources to, to go about translating the site um, manually, you'll look at a product called Joomfish. It's like it sounds, J-O-O-M-F-I-S-H. And again, it's in extensions directory, which is extensions.joomla.org. Extensions.joomla.org. Okay. So from there, here I am at the Joomla extensions directory. Let's try Google Translate. Just doing a quick search. And I'm sure that we'll find, see this? Lots and lots and lots. 
I don't have one to recommend. Look at the reviews, okay? Read the reviews, find out which ones are, are gonna work for you, okay? Not all of them are, are accurate results. Here's an Ajax Google Translator. Here's what I see. Ajax Google Translator means it'll do it on the fly. It's for 1.5 Joomla, and it's got four and a half out of five stars. So that's the first one I would click on. And I would say, okay, well, that looks pretty good. Let's read some of the reviews, find out what it is. I also look if it's commercial or non-commercial. Okay, this one's free, non-commercial. So that might be the one for you, okay? Similarly, if we do a search for Joom Fish, just like that. J-O-O-M-F-I-S-H. This is the one that allows you. It's a, it's a component, okay? Some of these, now see these are elements for Joomfish, but here is the actual, oh, now look at this. Joomfish Google Translator will do it automatically too. So look through. You're going to find all the resources that you need, everything that you need in the extensions directory at extensions.joomla.org. Use their search, use the menus at the left, and I'm sure you'll be able to find what you're looking for. Okay, thanks for the question. Um, he's not done. Oh, my. <laughs> he said, also, he would like your insight and views regarding multiple topics on a single site in Joomla. I'm diverse and would like okay. to write on differing subjects, but your insights on how best to split the subject so the general overview doesn't suffer would be great. All right. So you're looking at uh, content categories. Uh, you may th consider using something like K2. I won't get into that. But... If you want to do content categories, that's going to help you to organize your site in such a way that it's perceivable as navigable by the uh, user. You look at our site, we have, I've got my blog. It's, it's separated from the rest of the content. It is Joomla. Uh, I have the videos, the episodes. That is part of Joomla. There are articles in Joomla. It's a category called videos. So by using categories, uh, you're able to organize things. And then when you create your menu, uh, think about how you want to organize those. So good luck. It's a vast uh, product. Uh, you really, you know, if you want to get into advanced Joomla work, uh, advanced websites using a content management system, it's vast. It's huge. Uh, st if you're just starting out and you're just doing an install, you might consider going with a uh, with something higher than 1.5, something like 1.6 or 1.7. Um, look at uh, their feature sets. Uh, 1.6 is going to introduce better user management uh, with a hierarchical um, user levels that is very, very handy if you're going to be allowing people to log in and add their own content. Uh, but otherwise, 1.5 has more support for uh, components. So you'll find things that are available for 1.5 that are not available for 1.6 and beyond. So, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, that's all the time that we have for viewer questions tonight. Thank you for your questions. And you can email us live at category5.tv uh, if you have a question for us or join us in the chat room, category5.tv. And I will allow you to uh, take it away with the news. Okay. Um, plugging gadgets into a socket in the wall or loading them with batteries or maybe even unfurling a solar panel is how most of us think of getting electricity. But what about plugging them into your body? It may sound far-fetched, but under the shadow of the Alps, Dr. Serge Kosnier and his team at the Joseph Furrier University of Grenoble... Grenoble? Grenoble? It's another Klingon word. Grenoble! <laughs> ...have built a device to do just that. Their gadget, called the biofuel cell, uses glucose and oxygen at concentrations found in the body to generate electricity. Um, they are the first group in the world to demonstrate their device working while implanted in a living animal. If all goes, wo if all goes to plan, within a decade or two, biofuel cells may be used to power a range of medical implants, from sensors and drug delivery devices to entire artificial organs. Wow. Um, all you need to do to power them up is to eat a candy bar and or drink a cola. So mm. maybe you can be the first test subject, Rob. There we go. Plug it into my nose. <laughs> it does not have a grounding prong, but it is, uh, it's otherwise going to power it just fine. You hope that's where <laughs> it plugs in. <laughs> um, Taiwanese smartphone maker HTC has been dealt a big blow in its legal battle with Apple involving patent infringement claims. The U.S. International Trade Commission, ITC, has ruled that Apple did not violate hate patents as claimed by HTC in a complaint lodged last year. Um, HTC has asked the court to ban imports of several Apple products into the U.S. citing patent infringements. infringements. HTC share fell as much as 6% after the ruling. And uh, now we have a personal car that drives itself automatically to your destination, and this may sound like science fiction, but new pods at Heathview... 
Heathrow Airport in London have achieved just that, taking passengers from car park to terminal quickly, easily, and driven entirely auto- autonomously. Um, the idea of personal rapid transit, as it is called, is to make public transport more personal, allowing on-demand journeys at the push of a button, all controlled by computers and lasers rather than a human. The system has been heralded as a solution to transport congestion in years to come. And this is not the only futuristic idea for public transportation that has been developed. One blue sky idea is the Aerotrain, a plane-like vehicle which travels at up to 350 kilometers an hour, or 220 miles per hour, just 10 centimeters above the ground. Its speed relies on aerodynamics similar to those used in a plane or a hovercraft, using the air's cushion to prevent it from touching the floor. While currently in prototype, developers at the Tohoku University in Japan have already demonstrated the idea and hope it can be in public use by 2010. And whoa, that thing looks 20, wonky. <laughs> 2020, yeah. Well, that, the one that's on the screen is actually real and in use right now. And does that not say well, total... It's alien or something. It says total recall to me. Like, totally takes me back to, uh, to that Terminator movie. Terminator steps out. Yeah. And somebody was it's asking in the chat room, the uh, JVSCC is wondering if it if it has Star Trek playing in it, and I think it would probably uh, definitely have Star Trek or Total Recall on, on repeat. <laughs> definitely. That just reminds me of when he took that giant ball out of his nose, the tracking device. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> okay, so we also have here a faulty switch at a data center left millions of BlackBerry users around the world unable to use messaging and web browsing services Two on their weeks. handsets. Sorry. Two weeks. <laughs> For those of us who don't use BlackBerry, we were fine. But um, instead of offering a price reduction for the service through the course of the outage, Research in Motion is offering its users compensation for a three-day outage by way of some legacy games, as well as personal productivity tools and utilities. In a statement announcing the giveaway, Michael Azid, <laughs> Chief of BlackBerry Owner Research in Motion, apologized again for the three-day service stoppage. We are grateful to our loyal BlackBerry customers for their patience, he said. We are taking immediate and aggressive steps to help prevent something like this from ever happening again. And the programs which BlackBerry claims are worth more than $100 will be free until the 31st of, de- 31st of December 2011. Business customers are being offered a free month of technical support. Those who already have a support contract will be offered a month of BlackBerry's enhanced support services. So, <laughs> dear me. To get the full stories at category5.tv/newsroom. The Category 5 TV newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions by our community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of on-air mention, email newsroom at category5.tv. For the Category 5 TV newsroom, I'm Rachel Shu. Thank you. I know it's, uh, you know, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but that whole BlackBerry kerfuffle, I mean, now they're saying the new OS is coming out and that's great and everybody's looking forward to that. It's like trying to sweep it under the rug, but 12 apps. It's like, here you go. Have a legacy game. Have The Sims. <laughs> Unreal. Anyways, uh, the Category 5 Technology TV tonight is brought to you in part by Pogo Plug. You'll find them cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug. Fantastic device, which will ex- extend the uh, storage capacity of your mobile device and give you streaming services to uh, to that device. Very cool stuff. Cat5.tv slash Pogo Plug. And, of course, we're also brought to you by Planet Calypso. You can download the free online game at www.cat5.tv slash Calypso. This is Category 5 Technology TV. I'm your host, Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Rachel Shu. Took her a moment to, to, to chime it's in It's my first time. It's all I'm good. I'm not sure every now and then. You Are you ready to out. rumble? Are you ready? Now that we have been talking about Arnold, we are going to be like, let's like have an epic battle now between Photoshop on one side and the GIMP on the other. And again... No battle. No, seriously. I'm going to bring up the GIMP. You're going to bring up Photoshop. All We're right. going to do this right. Mm-hmm. Well, what is it that you're going to be showing us tonight? I'm, I'm curious. Rachel is a fantastic Photoshop artist and, and uh, actual, uh, is it acrylic paint? Uh, yeah, well? I paint with acrylics as well. So she does some fantastic artwork. Uh, and we're we're very privileged to have her showing us some some tricks of the trade in Photoshop, but I do want to, as Arnold was saying earlier, um, also compare if these same things that you do in Photoshop, your commercial application, 
are going to work for somebody like myself who's using the GIMP, GNU Image Manipulation Program, for free. Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, let's see what, uh, what happens here. So bring up the GIMP. So, uh, what's that? Bring up the GIMP? No, I'm going. I was saying to them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> She's I was like, like I, I'm not, the GIMP? no, I'm doing it in where's Photoshop. What are you talking about? Do don't don't it. phase me like that. <laughs> okay, so I've got uh, I've got access. I believe uh, I should have access. I'm going to need to uh, just grab your mouse here. Funny stuff. Here we go. We're just gonna connect Rachel's computer over to uh, to our broadcast server here which with Wirecast from Telestream, cat5.tv slash Wirecast is, is literally that quick. It's done. So what is it that you're going to be showing us today? This is, this is very cool. Um, I just completed this picture. I called it the gnome meter, speaking of gnomes tonight. And mm. um, I'm just going to show you how to put a texture in a picture. It doesn't have to be a drawing. Like if you're not interested in art, say you have a photo and you want to spice it up or make it look like it's from the 1800s or something, you can also use textures to do that as well. Very cool. So you've got creature2.psd open in Photoshop CS4. Mm -hmm. Now I don't have Photoshop because I'm on Linux and I'm using the GNU image manipulation program, which is available for Windows, uh, Linux, or Mac. So I actually have that PSD file, and you'll see that if I double-click on it, it's going to try to open it in the GIMP. So let's see what happens. There it is. Okay? So easy breezy. Mm -hmm. We'll uh, let you take over. All right. So sorry if it's a bit washed out on your computer. I was having monitor troubles, but um, you can see here... That looks great. That's awesome. You can see here there's... Um, I've just gotten a texture off Google. You can make your own textures, um, whatever you want. Okay. And you just take this little arrow icon in the top left corner and you click on it and you drag it over onto your picture and just center it however you would like. So you're placing that on top. So similarly in the GIMP, if I may, I'm going to hit, oh, I'm going to just go grab my move tool over here, grab that and drop. Does that work? No. I'm going to go control A, control C and then over here control V and I'm going to get the same effect, right? That's the same effect that you're going for? Yep. And right. um, then... Oh, sorry, there, there it is in the GIMP. Sorry, I didn't realize that. So I did it in the GIMP. <laughs> <laughs> so now you've got this, and sometimes the, the texture might not be the size you want it, and then you can go to Edit, Transform, Scale, and then you can adjust it if you think it's too big or okay. too small. And this is really just a texture, so it's not it's not going to be lossy in any way because it's it's really just going for the like the the grain of it. Is that right? Um, yeah, I'm just I'm adding a texture to the creature itself because if you can see here, um, right now I think he's okay, but he's kind of. So I just want right. to add a bit of texture to his skin because here I'll zoom up a bit. He could use a bit of spicing up a bit. And, ooh, look. It's Eric. He's in the <laughs> picture. So. Oh, dear me. Then we, uh, let me just zoom out a bit here. You take this, turn it back on, and you go to multiply up here. And that will make it. So you've changed the layer type to multiply on the Oops. texture, right? Yeah, the texture is now multiply. Okay, so I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to try to replicate the same process on the GIMP. I'm going to highlight that layer and change the layer type to multiply. So it appears that I've got a, a very similar effect there in the GIMP as well, which is free software. <laughs> you and your GIMP. No, this is, this is cool to learn this for sure. And then I love uh, it. So from here, normally I've got a mouse I'm using here, but normally you'd want to use a tablet if you want the best quality. All right. And because I don't want a texture on the sky, because there's not really textures in sky, you would just take the eraser over here. It looks just like an eraser. And generally for erasing, I pick an airbrush because it softens the edges. It's not so harsh. And it, it just blends it in a bit better. And then you can just zoom up because this can be a bit of a tedious part. You would take the eraser and just start erasing anything you don't want texturized. And when I get to the edge, I get 
you don't have to be this picky, but that's just the way I'm. You can go really close. Getting right in there, yeah. And it's pretty high res as far as what you're working in, so you can get right in there. Yeah, and so I'm not gonna make you suffer through me erasing all that. So after oh, so it's erased, okay. it'll look like this. So you see before. So that's just from. And after, that's just adding a texture. All right. Before and after. So now he doesn't look so shiny. He's got a bit more life to him. Mm -hmm. And then from here, if you want, you can uh, take the dodge tool. That's this, looks like a lollipop. Wicked. And um, then you can, up. Oh, wrong layer. That's While you're changing. While you're changing layers, I'm just going to bring up the GIMP again and just see I've got the eraser tool here. I've got the brush tool here to change to a feathered edge brush, just like you did on, on Photoshop. And then I'll zoom in with the plus key, which is shift and plus. And I'm going to do the same thing in the GIMP, okay? So I can do that. And then I've got my dodge tool over here. So I've got. it seems that I've got all the same tools that, that you have in Photoshop. So this is good. Mm-hmm. It's a battle to the death. <laughs> to the death. All right. Here we are back in Photoshop CS4. All right. So then all I do with the dodge tool is I take areas that were here, if I hide this, that were lighter before and maybe have just become a bit muted. I would take that on the texture layer and just um, the highlights, just brighten them up a bit to make the old nice. colors pop again and after you've done everything you want to lighten up in that area then you can go to um, the burn tool which this is a different version of Photoshop than I have normally it's under the dodge tool does CS4 have it must have if you hold in I think CS4 if you hold oh there we go there we go there here's we go. the okay. burn tool and then the same thing on the shadows you can just pick up a bit more and again, you would do the entire picture this way. And so I have Very cool. it already done here a bit. Oh. And then from here, you're almost done, but let's see. You may want to alter the colors a bit if you don't quite like how it's turned out. And you can do this by going to Image, Adjustments. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer again. So Image, Adjustments. And you could try hue and saturation, but I don't really like this method because you don't have as much control over it. And you could just scroll left and right, but... So is this still in the texture layer? Which layer are we looking at right now? Um, yeah, we're on the texture layer still. Okay. We're just altering the colors of the texture. If you wanted to change what he looked like, wow. I don't like that as much, though. So I would go to image adjustments and color balance because this gives you a lot more control. You can change the mid-tones, highlights, and shadows and you could add some red and yellow and green if you want to just or you could go crazy and make them blue, just whatever you want to do. And so here I have the colors I chose and we'll just, uh, let's see, zoom out a bit and there you can see the finished texture and if you want to use more than one texture in your picture like I have a texture on the mushroom um, right. it's, you best use different textures because everything would have a different texture in real life just so it doesn't get too flat looking very cool so the the graininess is just gonna give us that it really gives that uh, flesh kind of almost um, what would you call it like blemishes yeah because so very few things have perfectly smooth skin so that's that very few things <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> shiny <laughs> yeah. these lights are tough on it yeah all right that's cool and i'm able to do uh it seems everything that rachel has been showing me here i've got in the gimp i can change that dodge tool to a burn tool by changing the type where on photoshop she was holding in so i'm able to you know do the same kind of thing that she was doing there um, so that's that's really cool and incredible artwork as well. Awesome. Just yeah, that, that's. Does anybody have any questions for Rachel uh, while we're talking about Photoshop and and how that's possible? Now, what is uh, what is the photo licensed under? I, I suppose I can talk to you about this after the fact. But is there is there any way we can put this on the website for people to try and Photoshop or the GIMP? Pardon? 
is there any way that we could we could license this under Creative Commons and let people um, play with it under under the GIMP? Yeah, if you if you want to, it's there not for it. anything special. <laughs> All right. Very cool. I noticed as well that you've left some layers here, and again, the GIMP is able to show us uh, each of the layers yeah. that you've as created. As you can see, uh, the face has, I didn't really like what I originally had. You oh, can yeah. see he had these blue, didn't turn out well, I didn't put enough joints on them. So That's very cool. It's neat yeah, to see sure, the process as well. Make sure you do lots of layers with anything. I think there was a hundred layers on that I combined by the end, just because oh, wow. if you make a mistake, you can delete a layer easily. So you keep the master over. files as well? So the PSD files, you've got the original, do you, in, in most cases? Yeah, with all the Very layers cool. still. Awesome. Thanks, Rachel. Agamotto says, 100 layers! Uh, Jot wants to know how long that took for you to, to get to that point with that uh, photo. That one probably took about 15 hours. 15? So. That's it? It's a bit of tedious work, but... She's crazy! Use a tablet. You, you can't yeah, yeah. do it with a mouse. <laughs> well, because then you're working with like a pen, essentially. Yeah. That's brilliant. Well done. So I, I know it was supposed to be an epic battle, but I think it's pretty much tied. I mean, Photoshop and the GIMP were both fully capable of doing uh, what was demonstrated here tonight. And I show you that because I want you to know that free Libra open source software is... Some, some really impressive stuff. And looking at stuff like the GIMP, GNU Image Manipulation Program, I think, you know, if the kids are starting school and they want uh, to, to be doing photo manipulations at, at that level, to be able to get a free piece of software, give it a try, and you can see how easy it is to translate from Photoshop to the GIMP. So you can follow tutorials that are made for Photoshop, and I'm able to do it. It's awesome. That's at GIMP.org, and of course Photoshop being commercial application. What kind of space does an image with 100 layers take up? Now, you're working with something that... This is a question from Agamotto in the chat room. This is something that you're creating in a, a reasonably high resolution. Yeah, I think it was around 60 megabytes. 60 megs? Okay. Yeah, so... And it's not that I always delete ones I don't need. It's just like the drool I did on a different layer. If I didn't like how some of it was looking, I would mm. just remove it. Or if, if I wanted to try out something like a horn, then if I don't like it, I can just delete the layer and not have a problem so mm -hmm. Agamotto makes a good point that that's not the final print copy because when you're going to print it you're going to output it to a ping for example something yeah that's you wouldn't it wouldn't be that large you would combine the layers and right so that's much the com smaller. that's you know having every layer so that you can revert back and change things nice to have that master file if you've ever worked with audio production you know exactly what we're talking about where you've got you know the guitar track and the drum track and everything is separate so that if you ever decide oh well we want to redo the we want to remix it and take out those drums and put in a, a, a really cool <laughs> then you can do that yeah <laughs> you beatbox don't you I'm not even going to try. That would just be mortifying. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like I was choking on a hairball or something if I attempted it. Uh, VMPND asking about 300 DPI for print. Uh, you, can, you can touch on that. Um, yeah, for sure, because otherwise it's going to look a bit grainy and pixelated, and it just won't be as good quality if you wanted to put it in a book or frame it or comic book or whatever. 300 right. DPI. Uh, and I, I tend to work a little higher than that sometimes, but even when I'm creating for web, I'm creating at 300 DPI, even though web, once I rasterize it, once I render everything down, it's going to be 72. Uh, and the reason for that is because we want to have the text and everything crystal clear on logos and things, so working in a higher resolution, you don't, you don't have that lossiness. Um, it gives you a lot more capabilities, and we're outputting the ping files as your print file or whatever, because it's, it's going to be... Uh, much less lossy than uh, you know it's a lossless format so if you output to a jpeg it's gonna it's gonna kind of degrade the quality of your your photo you know, whatever it is so so could i use that technique to like l age somebody's face like put textures on on a, a person you could but there's much better ways to do it yeah. but it, it's a bit time consuming if you Get a picture of an old person and lay the pieces on and oh, strut. Okay. It's quite a complicated process, but then you can really make them look like a senior. But if you just want to age a photo, like make it look like you're from the 1800s, like okay. an old picture. Yeah, dirty I guess you could do picture. that too. Right? You can Add change the colors to like brown and then put like old parchment paper over top. 
And if you uh, reduce the transparency, if the texture is too bold on it, reduce the transparency and it'll be a bit more muted in the photo. Very cool. JVSCC wonders if, uh, if Photoshop is good enough to, uh, to actually put hair on my head. Well, I did this week. <laughs> well, they'll know about that next week. Ooh, you'll have to wait and see oh. how Rob looks with oh, hair. How do you like that tease? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Agamotto saying that uh, most of the stuff that they sent out in college uh, was at 600 DPI. Sure. And, and maybe higher. For certain applications, the the big difference with, between the GIMP and Photoshop is uh, that Photoshop supports CMYK out of the box. CMYK being uh, more common for print because it's it's going to print. Uh, I don't want to say better, but it's more common for print. So with the GIMP, it's it's uh, it's RGB. So working with something like this that's for screen, it's perfect. Building websites, it's fine. Editing your photos, which are JPEG, which are RGB anyways, they're not CMYK. Um, you're you're uh, you're going to be just fine using the free software. CMYK is uh, cyan yellow. Uh, CM no <laughs> cyan magenta yellow black. The K is black. I don't know why. RGB is red green blue. So that's the way that the color spectrum is is formed for the photo. Definitely a, an Afro D-Man A10. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. Yes, Becca commenting about my hair. <laughs> my hair. <laughs> Brilliant. Hey, we have uh, only a couple of minutes left, everybody. Oh, wow. The hour just flew, flew by. Unbelievable. I'm just such great company. Mm-hmm. <laughs> everybody say hi in the chat room. Uh, post us an email live at category5.tv. Did you enjoy yourself today? Oh, yeah. I had a great time. Good, good. Yep. Excellent. Dave Maydew thinks a mohawk would suit me very well. Maybe I'm, next time. I'm actually wearing I'll a faux a hawk right now. You just can't, you can't see it. It's like that'd be good, like a comb over that kind of comes together in the middle. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I remember mm. he back in the days when he had hair. Uh, he decided he would cut it himself, and he came out looking like Friar Tuck because he had shaved <laughs> sideburns completely off. And now look at me. Uh, this but is my punishment. But the rest of the hair was long, so this it was like bowl-cut perfection. Unbelievable. <laughs> you want to see something cool that I picked up? It was it was like five bucks at the costume store, but it was something that I noticed about this that was hilarious. It's it's really quite cool. I mean. Ooh, sound TNG effects. phaser, right? But what's hilarious? I don't know if everybody picks up on this or not. Look at the Enterprise. You can't see that, but it actually... You, you can probably see. Oh, I'm so going to phase you. <laughs> the, the Enterprise has been flipped on the, uh, on the packaging, which is... You can't see it. It's unfortunate you can't see that. I thought it was pretty hilarious from a geek perspective. I don't get... NCC-1701D. Do you see that? NCC-1701D. This is some poor photoshopping, friends. You can see that. Yeah, I can. And it's the Enterprise D for my geek friends. And what do you notice about the Star Trek logo? It's, it's definitely a bad mirror image, Agamotto. It's backwards. It's inverted. But the logo is... Anybody in the chat room? TOS, not TNG. Thank you, Dave. Isn't that funny? But it's a pretty cool replica. You gotta say. I mean, for six bucks or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So when Eric gets out of line, I've got some way to uh, to put him in his place. <laughs> That's why I've got it over here, JBSCC. Thanks everybody for joining us tonight. <laughs> Still strangle you. Yes. Cool. Cadwell saying you can get them on Amazon. And, and I, I, you know, I didn't mention it tonight, but don't forget about our costume store. There is still time. Cat5.tv slash costumes. We're really down to the wire now. I mean, we've got uh, a week, uh, just under two weeks mm-hmm. before uh, dress-up day. So cat5.tv slash costumes. You'll be able to pick up stuff like that phaser. How cool. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. Uh, Mm -hmm. Joining us in the chat room, joining us at home, watching us through Miro Internet TV or iTunes or however it is that you catch the show. Pop us an email live at category5.tv. We'd love to get your viewer testimonials, uh, your postcards, your actual post postcards. It's always a pleasure to get some real mail. 
and uh, nice. Thank you, everybody, for, for sending that in. Nice having you here. Mm-hmm. It was great being here. Cheers. Bye-bye. So I, I can post that picture. I'm going to do that. So uh, watch the show notes for episode mm-hmm. number 213. I'm going to post up the, the PSD file, the original Photoshop document, the mm-hmm. one that you brought with you. That way you can see that it actually does work in the GIMP, mm-hmm. GNU Image Manipulation Program. Or if you're using Photoshop, that'll work as well. Awesome. Thanks, uh, everybody. Is it still on? Yeah, it's still oh, on. Just <laughs> <laughs> is it still on? <laughs> I was just going to say, if anyone does use it, though, please just uh, don't post it on a website of your own or whatever. Just, Or at least say bye. Yeah, Rachel it's uh, Creative Commons Attribution, which means you absolutely must provide uh, attribution, which means it has to say that it is uh, the work is created by Rachel Shu, uh, which is spelled X-U. Uh, you see it down there. And uh, attribution to www.category5.tv so that people know where it came from. Cool. Have a fantastic uh, week, and I will see you next Tuesday. It's going to be a lot of fun. As Rachel was kind of hinting at, we've got some really exciting stuff for the Halloween special. Um, So don't miss it. It uh, comes early this year. So talk to you next week. Have a good night. See you, Ray. Bye-bye.